Hello, I'm Mr. Craig and I want to discuss some wave problems dealing with frequency, wavelength, speed of light, all that fun stuff. So let's get right into it. Uh, first and foremost, you will have this table at your leisure to use. Um, unfortunately, for the test, we won't be doing any E equals MC squared equations, unless it's a bonus question. So we're not going to work any of those types of problems out. But we will use these two equations primarily, and one of the main reasons I want you to practice working these types of equations out is so that you know which equation to use based on what's given to you. So let's go ahead and do a couple examples. The first one are the two practice problems at the top here. The first practice problem says a certain photon of light has a wavelength of 422 nanometers. What is the frequency of the light? Now, one of the first things that we have to realize is that we have some constants. And especially the first one here is the speed of light. And you'll notice that the speed of light, or the value C, is 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So if you're given a question that has nanometers, you can't leave that unit nanometers. You must convert it to meters. And then we'll work on the time here. So let's do that first. So we have to make sure that our wave length is actually a length that we can use unit-wise, which means that we have to have meters. So start off with what you know. And is this a metric to metric conversion? Nanometers to meters? Absolutely. So again, if it's not the unit you want to use, slide it diagonally and we'll put that right there. Also, make sure that you're asking yourself, which of these two units is larger, meters or nanometers? Yeah, if you don't remember, write down the great mega king again. But meters is definitely larger than nanometers. And then how many times do we move the decimal from meters to nano? That's right, nine times. So in this case here, we're going to multiply 422 times 1 divided by 1 times 10 to the 9, positive 9, not negative 9. And that will give us 4.22 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Now that we have our unit meters, we can finally do something with this question. Before, you couldn't do anything. Now, let's make sure that we're understanding what the question is asking. It wants to know, what is the frequency? And the frequency is actually, make sure that we remember what the unit for, or the variable for frequency is. Looks like a V. And up here, it's kind of a pointy V. Don't worry about that. Just know that it's a V. And so if we're given a wavelength, and remember, what is the unit or the variable for wavelength? Very good. It looks like this. It's called lambda. So this is wavelength. And this guy here is the frequency. So that's actually what we're looking for. So frequency is that unit there. Now, your given frequency I'm sorry, you're looking for frequency, you're given wavelength, which of these two equations do you think you're going to need to use? Well, we're not looking for energy, and we're not using Planck's constant. So it does have frequency, but it's not something that we can use. However, speed of light has wavelength and frequency. And remember, speed of light is a constant, so hey, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and use the speed of light equation which in this case is speed of light, which is C, is the wavelength times the frequency. Make sure that you're rearranging these variables before you plug anything in. We know the C. We know speed of light. We know our wavelength. It's right here. That's actually our wavelength. So we know two of the three variables. Solve for the unknown. So make sure that we rearrange these. So what that means is I'm going to take my wavelength and divide it on both sides. As a heads up, speed of light will always be on top. Always. Always. So if you have that inverted, then you're going to have the inverse of your value, which is not good. So now our equation looks like this. Frequency, which is the speed of light over lambda or wavelength. And now make sure that you're including your units. Speed of light is a constant, 3.0 times 10 to the 8. Meters. And again, I'm not a big fan of double division lines, so I'm going to put the seconds right where it belongs, down here. Okay. So meters per second. Don't, don't make multiple division lines. It just It's messy. And our wavelength, which we found was 4.22. So 
So I'm going to put my 4.22 times 10 to the negative 7. And what was the unit? That's right, meters. Now look and see how clean this looks. Because our meters are on the opposite side, what unit remains? I hope you said 1 over seconds. And remember that 1 over seconds is our frequency unit. It's also equal to a hertz. Now, a hertz, if you're ever given a question that's in hertz, that's the unit, one over second. So um, you could give your answer in hertz if you wanted to, or just leave it as one over seconds. So let's not find out what that value is there. We're saying that we have a value of 7. Point, we'll say 1, 1 times 10 to the positive 14. Now, what does that translation actually mean? So that means that we have 7.11 times 10 to the 14 waves or wavelengths that are actually passing a given point per second. So that's quite a bit, quite a few. Okay? So there's our answer to I. So 7.11 times 10 to 14, 1 over seconds. Actually, it's U on down. So there's your first answer right there. All right. Number two, what is the energy of the quantum of light from part one? Now, this right here might drive some of you crazy. Actually, let me use a different color here. This right here might drive you crazy. All that is saying is photon. Now, you might say to yourself, why, why are you using that type of wording? Because you're going to probably see it in the homework. So I want to make you used to that. A quantum of light is simply a photon. So now it wants to know what is the energy of this light or this photon that has a wavelength of 422 nanometers. So what are we going to do? Well, we have our frequency. We're looking for energy. Now, what equation should you use in this case? Well, are you going to use the speed of light equation? No, you don't need to. You already you have everything for that one. So we're going to use this equation here, where we have E is equal to Planck's constant. And again, that is a constant. It will always be given to you. You just have to know how to use it. And it is kind of a strange unit. It's joule seconds, not joules per second. It's a joule second. So that one's a little strange. Not too common there that we use. Okay, so here we go. It wants to know what is the energy. The equation for that is E equals Planck's constant times frequency. We just calculated the frequency in the step above. So this becomes a very easy problem. So we're going to plug in our Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34, and that's joule second. Now, you don't have to memorize that. That's still up here. That's in the box. 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. Okay. And again, make sure you're showing your units, because if you're not showing your units, this is going to get really sloppy. And then we're going to multiply that times the frequency. We don't have to rearrange this variable because E, the energy, is what we're looking for, is all by itself. And the frequency we found was 7 point, 7 7.11 times 10 to the positive 14, and that is in seconds. But I'm going to put a division line underneath all of that. Okay? Just so you can see that seconds really goes down there. Now, why did I do that? Mainly so you could see how clean that looks when the seconds are canceled. What unit remains? That's right, our energy unit, which is joules. So now we just multiply that out, we get our value. Let's do that. And this time I got a value for my energy is equal to 4.71 times 10 to the negative 19 and that is joules. Okay. So not very much energy, and we would not expect there to be a whole lot of energy. This is a single photon of light. Okay. All right, let's take a look at question number one. Question number one asks, what is the energy? So there we go, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the energy of a quantum of light, aka photon, with a frequency of 7.39 times 10 to the positive 14 hertz. Now again, this hertz simply means the unit is 1 over seconds. So you may want to do that when you're writing out this problem. So again, what is the energy? And we also have hertz. So that means we're going to use this equation because frequency has the unit 1 over seconds, which is hertz. So it looks like we're going to use the same equation that we did in this last one here. 
So again, write out your equation. So energy and yes, always show this same equation, no matter how easy or how simple it is, because that's going to be worth a point. And Planck's constant is a constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. Okay. The frequency in this case is given to you. It's 7.39. 39 times 10 to the positive 14. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to write hertz there. I'm actually going to put seconds on the bottom. So seconds on the bottom. Because again, we want to get used to canceling out alike terms that are on opposite sides of the numerator and denominator. So in this case here, we'll have our unit as joules, which is our energy. So we'll get some value in joules. And let's find out what that is. Make sure that your calculator is functioning correctly here. And in this case, I get a value of 4. We'll say 90 times 10. Four point. That looks strange. Let's scoot up just a little. So in this case, I get a value of 4.90 times 10 to the negative 19. And again, a very small amount of energy there. Okay. So there we go. There's your question number one. And again, very, very similar to the second practice problem. All right, question number two asks, what is the wavelength of the quantum of light from question number one? So in this case, we're looking for wavelength and go back to your equations and ask yourself, well, where is wavelength in all these equations? Well, it only appears one time right here. Now we do know frequency because it was given to you. Did not have to calculate that. It was given to you. So the frequency is 7.39 times 10 to the positive 14 and it's one over seconds. So this is nice because we have everything that we need. So again, you have your speed of light equation and we're looking for, in this case, the wavelength, which is lambda. So we're looking for that guy. So that means that frequency is divided in this scenario. So now the equation looks like this, where we have speed of light over the frequency is equal to lambda, wavelength, sorry. So we can plug in our speed of light, which again is a constant, 3.0 times 10 to the 8. And I'm going to have just one division line here, meters. I'm going to put seconds down here. And then we'll divide it by the frequency that was just given to us in an earlier problem. 7.39 times 10 to the positive 14. 7.39 times 10 to the positive 14. And notice what I'm going to do. It's, it's 1 over seconds. So I'm not going to put another division line here. I'm going to put it on the opposite side. So technically, seconds goes right there. See how clean that looks? You only have one division line, but what happens to the unit seconds? Correct. They get canceled out. What unit remains? Meters. What are we looking for? Wavelength. What's the unit for wavelength? Meters. Okay. So again, allow your units to talk to you. You just have to be willing to listen. All right, they will help you out. So we'll have meters and then whatever all that is. Okay, so we get a length of 4.06 times 10 to the negative seven. And again, that is in meters. So if I were asking you to convert that to nanometers, which is a very common light unit, would you know how to do that? Well, let's see. Pause the video and see if you can. you've had a chance to work this out on your own, but to convert from meters to nanometers, 
we don't divide by one times 10 to, neg or to the positive nine, we actually multiply it. So in this case, this would be 406 nanometers. Cool. All right, let's look at question five. So I'm gonna let you do three and four because they're very similar, very similar. Uh, number five it says a certain blue light has a frequency of 6.91 times 10 to the 14 hertz. What is the wavelength? So that's what we're looking for. What is the wavelength of this light? So again, ask yourself, what are we given? What do we know? We're given the frequency and the question wants us to find the wavelength. So we know back here, again, our two equations that we're going to focus on, this is the only equation that has wavelength. That's the one we're going to use. Okay. So we're looking for the, or I'm sorry, we're looking for the wavelength. So you have your speed of light equation and you are aware of your frequency. So it's very similar to the one that we just worked out. So move your frequency down. Now our equation looks like this. Speed of light, 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So let's put that second on the bottom. And what else are we given? We're given our frequency, which is 6.91 times 10 to the positive 14. Now hertz is again, one over seconds. So one divided by seconds. So the seconds goes right there. What happens to the unit, goes bye bye. And we are left with the unit that we really want for wave length. So let's find out what that is. In that case, that's 4.34. We'll say. 10 to the negative 7, and that is in meters. Okay? Alright, the last one that I wish to work out for you is it wants you to find the energy of the quantum of light from question 5. So again, what do we know? We know our frequency. We now know our wavelength. We might use that. But we also know our equation, which is this one right here. So we'll use our energy equation. So we don't have to calculate the frequency because it was given to us right there. So that's what we're going to use in the last one. Also, we're going to use Planck's constant, 6.626 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. And then this time we multiply times the frequency that was given in the previous question. 6.91, 6.91 times 10 to 14, one over seconds. Be sure to show that. So 6.91 times 10 to the 14. And again, that is over seconds. Okay, so looking at the units, seconds cancel out, we're left with joules, which is our energy unit. Very good. And then make sure you can type that in. And our energy here is 4.58 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Again, these types of problems are not difficult. The most difficult component to working these out is knowing which constants to use, which equations to use, and what the units actually represent.